Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, we've got another day of severe weather across the central and southern plains. We've got a moderate risk out for northern Oklahoma into northeast Oklahoma, kind of straddling that Kansas-Oklahoma border area, including places like Enid, the I-35 corridor, north of Oklahoma City, and out toward the Tulsa area. The main threats today are going to be tornadoes, small 15% hatched area up there, uh, kind of on the I-35 corridor up there in northern Oklahoma, surrounded by a pretty decent sized 10% hatched area as well for significant tornadoes. And then damaging winds as the storms move off to the east toward the Tulsa area. Wind will be a significant threat there. And large to significant hail will be a threat as well. Gonna have to be a little bit brief this morning since I am in Wichita Falls, Texas right now. Um, so gonna have to get on the road for some travel here up to the north very shortly, but we'll get you through the threats here for this setup today. So here is our satellite view. You can see the little swirl in the flow right here is our trough. And you can see we've got quite a bit of thunderstorms ongoing this morning already. And this has persisted from last night's activity across the Texas Panhandle, Texas South Plains. And this is kind of just a bunch of convection. You can see some strong thunderstorms ongoing here across uh, kind of southern Kansas into central Oklahoma down there to the southeast as well into Arkansas, northeast Texas. So quite a few storms ongoing, but these appear to be moving out pretty quickly off to the east and shouldn't be a significant threat for later today. You can see behind this we have some low clouds, but we should be able to get these to burn off and should have plenty of time to destabilize after these morning thunderstorms move through. So that was kind of a, a fly in the ointment, ointment for this forecast for the last couple of days was how much convection were we going to get in the morning and how quickly would it move out and how much time after that would we be able to destabilize. And it looks like it's going to be able to move out pretty quickly. We should get quick destabilization and continued moisture return to the north behind these storms uh, the, during the late morning and afternoon hours. So you can see here, here's our radar. Bunch of, guys, kind of a complex here across central Oklahoma, continued thunderstorm development ahead of that and along that complex. So that should move off to the east and southeast as we go through the day today. A little swirl in the flow there, maybe a little bit of, an, of a mesoscale convective vortex, just something interesting to point out there, but you can see not much behind this complex. So we should be able to get continued moisture return and uh, no storm development on the back side of that. Let's look at some surface data here. Let me refresh it here so we have the most up-to-date data and you can see that we've got kind of some chaoticness here in the surface map in southern Oklahoma. You can see these symbols, these kind of R looking symbols here are thunderstorms so the observations here in central Oklahoma may not be quite as accurate as we'd like but you can see down here just to the south of the Red River we've got that plume of upper 60s, mid to upper 60s dew points here that should continue to stream north behind this complex today, this the ongoing storms today as it moves up, as they move off to the east should be able to surge pretty nicely up to the north so moisture not really concerned today as it has been maybe yesterday and with some of the past setups um, but I, we should be able to get persistent southeasterly flow ahead of the surface low out here into Kansas you can see this kind of the swirl there in the flow that should uh, allow for moisture return quick moisture return uh, here as we go through the day today so let's go ahead and look at our um, upper air maps. So we've got our 500 millibar, millibar map here. You can see another kind of case of one of these sort of more complex sort of troughs, lower amplitude, not quite these deep, deep digging troughs that tend to, you know, produce overforced, more linear sort of convection. We've got a nice low amplitude trough, just like we had a few days ago um, on the Andover, Kansas uh, day. Very similar trough today. Um, so when that's going to move off to the east, you can see a very compact belt of enhanced flow there right around the base of that trough. That will move off to the east uh, today. And right there, kind of in the exit region, you can see very nice defluence aloft. So we have those spreading out of the wind vectors with height. So very nice um, upward motion should, should take place here across the exit region today as that trough moves off to the east. Let's look at 700 millibars here. So we can look at our short waves. And you can see one kind of right in here that's maybe helping to aid the current thunderstorms uh, here across southern Kansas into central Oklahoma. We've got maybe one back in here as well across New Mexico. That may rotate around here 
and aid in thunderstorm development here up in kind of northeast Oklahoma, northwest Oklahoma, excuse me, south central Kansas come this afternoon. Um, we go down to 850 millibars, look at our low-level jet. We've got a very nice low-level jet in place here to the east of this low-level cyclone here. Um, so very potent low-level low jet, 40-plus knots here across much of the region, helping to pump um, that moisture northward and create a nice, what should be a nice shear profile here for today's uh, event. Let's look at the surface map here for one last kind of look here. And you can see where that surface low is, kind of the Oklahoma Panhandle, kind of near the Boise City area. And that is going to move off to the east or just to the southeast today as we go through the day today. And right ahead of that is going to be the focused corridor for severe thunderstorm development. Now, the difference between um, the event a few days ago, the Andover event, that we had our moderate risk up in northeast Kansas, and today's event, is that we're going to have the surface low kind of very close to kind of both targets here. By both targets, I mean this northern target along the surface low kind of warm front. And then we have our dry line that's going to set up here today. If we go back to our surface map, you can see we don't we kind of have broad 60s dew points here across the region, but to the west of that, very, very dry air. So this dry, this uh, warm, this uh, warm and moist air should focus here somewhere in this region uh, by this afternoon. And to the west of that, we'll have drier air. So we should have a dry line develop. But in our event the other day, the surface low was up here in Nebraska, and you had a very extensive sort of dry line here in, uh, into Oklahoma. And Oklahoma storms did not really get going, even though there was a risk for storms to go because the atmosphere was capped, and there wasn't quite an, as much forcing down here along the dry line. Well, that's not going to be the case today. The surface low is going to be very, very close in proximity to the dry line here and to the rest, um, to kind of this exit region of the trough. So the dry line, I think, today has a little bit better of a chance of firing storms down here into central Oklahoma than it did the other day. Looks like we will have that northern target as well. That's kind of the main focus of the severe weather outlook for today is that kind of warm front target. But there is, I think, a better chance today of firing storms farther south along the dry line, including the Oklahoma City metro area and areas just to the south um, today than there was um, with our event the last couple of days, uh, or a couple of days ago, excuse me. Uh, so let's look at our soundings here. And I'm not sure we can take much from these soundings this morning because of all this convection that's been around. Looks like both of these um, soundings were taken here. Oklahoma City and Fort Worth were taken with uh, convection in the area. So I'm not sure how, how trustworthy these soundings are. But I think we, get, we can at least take a kind of, um, you know, zoomed out view of what's going on here. So very kind of saturated profile here. That to me shows me there's a lot, there's quite a bit of cloud cover here across central Oklahoma. And as we saw in the satellite image, that was the case. Down here, you can see very kind of shallow moist layer um, here, 62 over 60 at the surface, very shallow moist layer though, only goes up to about 900 millibars. Um, so very shallow moisture here. If we go to the south, let's go to Fort Worth here. You can see we have a, quite a bit of a deeper moist layer there. And again, it does appear that there was convection in the area, but still a deeper moist layer here, quite a bit of instability, weak cap. So that is one thing today. This may be an artifact of the morning storms. The cap is not quite going to be as strong as it was for the event a couple days ago. You can already see we are fairly uncapped here. Our, our mixed layer parcel only has minus 55 convective inhibition. So not much capping to hold storms back today. I think we will see those low clouds kind of keep things stable for much of the day. You can see these low clouds here. They are already starting to burn off here into northeast, northwest Oklahoma. But this should uh, temper um, destabilization uh, for a bit. So should hold things off until perhaps early afternoon. In initiation may be a little bit earlier today given the weaker cap um, maybe as early as 2 to 3 p.m. here across northwest Oklahoma, southern Kansas. Um, but if we continue down here, I want to see the Del Rio sounding just to kind of give you, give a source region sort of sounding for where this moisture is coming from. Unfortunately we don't have a sounding from central Texas here. So I'll do, I'll do Del Rio, because that is clearly in the moist plume. And this, is, well, this is kind of a loaded gun scenario. We have a very, very deep moist layer there at Del Rio. And that's going to, again, stream up northward here, up into the region today. So very deep moisture today. Little bit of a capping inversion aloft. Elevated mixed layer there for sure at Del Rio. Very steep lapse rate plume there in the mid-levels. So we may have a little bit of a cap that builds back in, perhaps, 
um, as these, these early morning storms move out. And again, those low clouds may in, uh, inhibit destabilization for much of the early morning and early afternoon hours. And then by about 2 to 3 p.m., we may see storms start to fire pretty quickly and rapidly intensify, given ample buoyancy and a, just a beautiful, beautiful trough here to deal with here at 500 millibars. Again, I'll show you that. Just kind of a textbook trough for significant severe weather. Lower amplitude, less forcing, almost westerly flow at 500 millibars. Always has my attention for a supercell event here across the plains. Um, so let me look here. The 12Z NAM is just coming in, so we'll use the 9Z. We'll use the 12Z wrap here. If it's out, not quite out far enough, we'll use the 9Z wrap. Doing this a little bit early this morning again to kind of get on the road here shortly. So this is our 500 millibar map. So you can see our trough here, beautifully, beautiful looking trough here, lower amplitude feature. And so this is going to move off to the east throughout the day and become a little bit more negatively tilted. You can see how it becomes negatively tilted with time. And this is at 3 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And right now we're kind of perfectly in that exit region there for northern Oklahoma, southern Kansas. So 20Z, 3 p.m. Central Daylight Time. I do think storms will begin to fire at 3 p.m., maybe even a little earlier, maybe by about 2 p.m. here up in that kind of western edge extent of the moderate risk area. Again, 700 millibars. We've got several short waves rotating through that may assist things today. Um, nothing you can really pick out here for certain, but there were some se some 700 millibar short wave troughs we did analyze there on our mesoanalysis data. 850 millibars here. The low level jet stays in place throughout the day as that surf as that low level cyclone stays very nicely entrenched in the region there. And the uh, as usual, we see the low level jet increase. Um, near sunset and just after dark. So here's our surface pattern. You can see that surface low moves off to the east or southeast throughout the day. This is at um, 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So right at the tip of that will be our focus for significant severe weather and severe thunderstorm development today. But you can see that surface low is right there along the dry line as well. A little bit of a slanted dry line there. If we, you can see it a little bit better on the dew point map. The dry line is a little bit slanted there to the north, uh, from northeast to southwest. Um, if we zoom in here, um, do the float sector here, you can just see it's, it's, it's pretty clear if you're chasing where you need to be today. Beautiful dry line bulge there, moisture feeding up into that surface low. And so the preferred area for storm development should be somewhere up in there. Um, just to the west of the I-35 corridor up there in northwest Oklahoma. So places like Enid, Alva, Waquita, that seems to be the initiation zone to me, at least on this model and from the other models I've seen thus far. And then as we go through the day, you can see that cold front starts to impinge on the region. That This is our cold front here, colder air behind this. Um, but we're not going to totally sweep the moisture out. We have some severe weather events coming up in, in the coming days here. Um, but we do have a nice window, I think, before that cold front gets through of between about probably 3 and 6 p.m. for discrete supercell development up here on that surface low. Then on the dry line, you, or again, we have our surface low kind of centered down here, so we will have a little bit more conver surface convergence here, a little bit more lift to work with here down on the dry line for storms to go, unlike the other day down here in Oklahoma. If we look at our shear vectors here, Given the overall kind of lower amplitude trough, lesser forcing, you can see shear vectors here are, are almost perpendicular to our dry line. So definitely a discrete storm mode will be favored today, which will enhance the severe weather threat, particularly the tornado threat and large hail threat uh, with these storms this afternoon. Then by, uh, by early evening, we should get storms to congeal into a line once we get uh, or a bow echo up here in, into northern Oklahoma um, as that cold front kind of congeals. Uh, or impinges into the region, storms will congeal into a line or a bow echo up here into northeast Oklahoma. So we'll show you the HRRR run here. This is the 12Z HRRR. You can see it does initialize things fairly well. Lots of storms here across central Oklahoma into southern Kansas, Arkansas, northeast Texas. And as we go through the day, you can see that clears out pretty quickly. So the herd does not have an issue clearing this stuff out. And then by about 3 p.m. we get storm initiation here up into northeast Oklahoma, kind of just west of the Waquita area, um, and we get intense, intense supercell development up there just ahead of the surface low um, with, of course, all hazards, perhaps significant hazards there as well. And they move off to the east 
and her does congeal these storms pretty quickly. Kind of keeps them somewhat semi-discreet. You can see a few different cells in there, but there is, I think, a two to three hour window of discrete storms where there will be a significant severe weather threat before. It does kind of form a QLC, a, an MCS or bow echo here up into the nor northern Oklahoma with more of a significant damaging wind threat uh, with those storms as well. So that is all I have for now. One more thing. This, is the, this was the HREF, so the Ensemble High Resolution Models from last night, kind of really pinpointing that northern Oklahoma into northeast Oklahoma area for our tornado threat. This is the 24-hour neighborhood probability of a tornado. You can see the bullseye up there in northern Oklahoma, I-35 corridor kind of eastward there. And it's going to be, to me, it looks a little bit farther west here with these morning runs, but um, nonetheless, definitely a bullseye, a tornado bullseye up here in northern Oklahoma. So that's all we've got for now. Again, moderate risk up here for northern, northern Oklahoma into northeast Oklahoma. Again, the tornado threat going to be significant today. Um, if we get ample clearing behind the morning storms, which looks very, very likely at this point, within the first few hours of the convective life cycle, we should see a significant perhaps long track damaging tornado threat up there in northern Oklahoma. And then we move on to the uh, damaging wind threat there as the storms congeal into a line that cold front catches up and moves those storms off to the east. Large hail, significant hail going to be a threat as well earlier in the convective life cycle. Um, one thing we did not do, we did not take a sounding from up here. Um, so I will take a sounding from up here, just kind of um, lead you off here with the, leave you here with the in overall environment here for the storms today up in northern Oklahoma and um, should be a pretty potent environment for sure. Yeah, you can see large instability over 3,000 joules per kilogram of Cape, large low level instability there, 78, 70 degree dew points there at the surface, maybe a little high, maybe upper 60s, but shouldn't matter too much as well. Large looping, almost sickle shaped photographs there. So. Strong tornado is definitely a possibility. Steep lapse rates aloft. Large hail is a threat with these storms as well as damaging winds, especially later on in the life cycle of these storms. So with that, um, that's all I have for you right now. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.